Thank you, Bernardino. But it's a true pleasure, it's a big honor for me to be here today. I was thinking during, let me see if I can move this microphone from here. Yes, it's coming. See? Okay. I was um, feeling the experience of being in this room today, and I feel like we are a symphony. I feel like we are singing the same song with the different notes. But in the end, it's so peaceful and so rewarding to feel that we have a huge team and more to come to work in the same direction. And my 30 years plus of experience working with mental health and misuse drugs, I and groups or individuals, I use this beautiful metaphor about the diamonds. So when I hear or see, saw or feel the person with me, the pain, the shame, or being ignored, or rejected the most, because it's a lot of criticize or judgment between. I like to use this metaphor about the diamonds, how powerful and beautiful they are. But if we don't know how they look, and we walking in the street and it's a diamond there, we can walk over with no mercy. But today, thank you to someone who value, not only see the diamonds here, but to value the work that took to shine themselves. And I want to ask for a big applause to Bernardino de la Torre to say thank you. Bueno, sí. I move. <laughs> so, um, I'm a strong believer on a teamwork. And it's why, again, I say, if it's not for Bernardino, this beautiful team, we won't be here today. So thank you again, Bernardino. Thank you. Please give a hand, extra hands to him. Because it's a lot of effort to, be here, to make all of this together. I will let them to introduce themselves, but before that, I want to share a little bit what community they are representing. So, as Bernardino say, I'm independent represented. I'm not representing any agency. I'm totally independent. And here is coming from Paraguay representing the Guarani community. He speaks three languages, Guarani, Spanish, and English. He owns his own business. It's the reason why I'm thinking an orchestra. He is a musician. He's not only a musician, he plays mm, simultaneously the instruments, 
by his own creativity. Next, here we have the LGBTQ plus community representing the Latino community. She is bilingual and she is bicultural. And guess what? She is also amazing singer. <laughs> and here we have somebody representing the Native American community. Huge respect, a lot of pain. She is bilingual and she is bicultural. The last but not least, he is representing the young adult community. And he is bilingual and bicultural. And he has a beautiful family. I cannot speak here not a whole day, months, about the story of each of these individuals, diamonds here. This is a lot of work to shine up and not be ignored and not be rejected. It's a huge. But instead, I will let them to introduce themselves, and I will let them to speak about themselves. So please. Thank you, Odelia. Um, a big round of applause for her, too. Uh, she's, she's my mentor, too. So uh, my name is Elbio Gonzalez. Uh, I am a Paraguayan. Uh, American citizen by choice. Um, I live here for about 29 years. Um, I'm descendant of the Guarani Indians. Have ever, anybody watched the movie uh, The Mission? Those Indians uh, that appears and that, that, that's my descendant. The Guarani Indian by the South American, uh, they, they um, inhabit South America by Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, and all that uh, Amazon area. So um, I work for MHAAO, Mental Health Addiction Association in Oregon, for about um, eight months now. It's a peer a wellness specialist, and um, it, it is so far a very, very um, joyful experience and, and rewarding. Thank you. Uh, Elvio, before you pass, um, what I would like is to hear more about, um, okay, I hear where you're from, and a little bit are your uh, journey, a yep. little bit. Mm -hmm. um, my my um, journey, uh, I'm a, a recover, long time recover alcoholic. Um, I learned about this, the, the, the alcohol or any addictions like drugs, any other stuff. Um, it was a disease through Alcoholics Anonymous. So I'm, I'm really grateful to, to it. And that's where I start my first steps working with other people. Um, uh, I started to working with my sponsor uh, knowing more about myself and helping others, I started to to sponsor other people. So, through my dear friend here, Odelia, she um, invited me to to be certified as a mentor or as a PWS, no? And I, I did it here. I am. He also is an owner of business. I don't know if I told you that, but plus, <laughs> my respect. Thank you. Okay. Carmen, thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. Again, welcome. Um, my name is Carmen Duran. I write it because I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> I want a lot of things to say. I'm Carmen Duran, and I'm, um, I'm from Michoacán, Mexico. And I'm part of the Purepecha community. It's an Indian community, which, you know, unfortunately, I don't speak the, the, the dialect, but my great-great-parents, they did. And I'm very proud of that. I've been here in the United States for 43 years, living in Oregon for 26. Uh, and I'm a um, in long time, I'm an out recovery addict. Addict. I'm an addict. So, but I say long time because I couldn't stay in for one single moment. And I'm five years clean now. And, and in addition to that, you know, recovery brings me so much blessings and gifts. The only thing in my mind what came to my mind when I when I when I came to Portland from Salem, when I went to Portland from Salem, is just to stay clean. I was tired of that life. And I didn't know that all that I was gonna get to this point. This person right here in front of you that was abusing and using methamphetamine for over 20 years. Now I can help others. Now I have the passion to help others. Each peer that I see, each person that I see, is I see myself. And I'm, like, and I'm blessed now that I got credentials that I never thought I had. Now I'm a CRM, PWS, the CGRM, and also, I just complete my training for CDC one, and I'm registered for that. <laughs> and on top of that, I proudly represent the LGBT community and the Latina community because we need the help, we need the support. Because in my journey to recovery, like she was saying, I was rejected. I was living in Salem for so many years. And there was not a place for me. I was, the barrier that I encountered was being undocumented, being part of the LGBT community. They said, where will we not put you? We got beds only for men and women. And I said, wow. So that's how recovery is when you ask for help. And I suffered. And I don't blame, and I'm not feeling victim right now. No, it was not my time. There was a, pro a learning process that now I'm capable of showing my community and the rest of the world that it's possible. And then now that we have to open these, not, not create barriers, remove barriers for my community. Because what we need is that. We need to feel welcome, to feel wanted, to feel love. And accept it. And I'm here in front of you advocating for the rest of my community. Uh, my criminal record was one of the one of the barriers that I encountered too. But now I can work anywhere because they got sponge. Why? Because I'm in recovery. I'm clean and sober. And now, my goals and everything that I've been, or my successes, are here to be here with you and to my community, to be able to help others. Now I got three groups for the LGBT community, recovery groups. I got Grupo Reencuentro AA in Portland. I got Pan Dulce, which is an NNA group meeting, and I got a Arcoiris Latino, which is translating to Latino Rainbow. It's a process group. And we're moving forward because we need these groups, we need this support, we need treatment for a specific LGBTQ Latinos. And I know it's going to happen. And I'm advocating, I'm looking for, for funding for whoever help I can get, but I know it's coming. I know it's coming because my higher power is always here for me. So thank you. Thank you.
your name and where are you from and a little bit of your journey. So my name is Elizabeth Maldonado and I've born and raised in Oregon. I um, am registered ground round, Kalapuya native. Um, I have been in recovery for 14 years. I've been in pr to prison twice. Um, through my 14 years of recovery, I have gotten my family back. I have seven kids and 18 grandchildren. Wow. And <laughs> that's our community. <laughs> <laughs> A big family that I'm very grateful to be with. And um, it's been quite the journey of um, showing them that there is possible for change and to be, I can and they can leave the past behind and find a future. Uh, my barriers were my criminal record, my past, um, learning how to work through trauma, um, not knowing that I could be here today. I didn't know I could work in recovery. Um, I didn't know truly within my own self that I was worth it or that I was going to be able to do it. That's OK, Elizabeth. We hold a space for you. Take your time. It's so difficult. It's when I say how, what I really appreciate Bernardino multiple times, because it's so difficult. And you, a lot of you know, to really shine up and I see when I say in one on one some groups with the team and and all the effort that they do to do the very best at any and we do our very best at any capacity and we still facing shame, rejection, criticize, ignore. And like here, I am here to help you. People don't hear you. I'm here to heal. I'm ready and allowed to be totally ignored. Just take your time. So I, I thought like my biggest success was becoming an assistant manager at Pizza Hut. And I battled the challenge of do I not work for a week and go and take the CRM course or do I work? How do I figure out how to get it done? Because who's going to pay the bills? Um, so I took that risk, and I did it. And Spanish is my second language, and I took it in Spanish. And um, it was amazing. It was not as easy as I thought it would I didn't never thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Um, but uh, just the challenges of not knowing when you come from a background, um, gang life, street life, drugs, prison. Nobody ever tells you that you could do more with your life. You're put like in a category. You guys say stigmatism. And that's pretty much where they tell you like you can't go anywhere from that until like one person has faith in you or believes in you and guides you a different direction. Which for me it was Mario Cardena. And um, I didn't have to worry about paying for it because he was able to get a scholarship through the measure. 110, and um, I feel blessed for that opportunity. And um, I took the um, certification through Juntos, through Jose Luis, and um, Ricardo, and Ricardo, and Mario. They were all there. Um, you can pass the microphone, and we can come back to you. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry? Um, so after that opportunity with getting my certificate, um, I was given the wonderful opportunity from Odelia and MHAAO where I now work and I have been there for over three months and um, the best part of my job is that I work with people that I can tell them that they can and that there is more to life than being stuck in 
a treatment center or thinking that they can't get anything else. Um, like where I was at one time in life, not thinking that I would be able to do or get to where I'm at today. So I just love encouraging people and telling them all the resources and whatever direction they wanna go. It might take some time, but they'll be able to get it as well and just help support them through their journey. Gracias. Say your name, where are you from, and a little bit of your recovery journey. All right, hello everyone, I'm Ricardo Garcia. Please give Odelia Garcia a round of applause. She's been my teacher and mentor. Um, so yeah, I'm Ricardo Garcia. I'm uh, the Latinx Burn Program uh, Navigator and Coordinator at MHAO. Um, I'm from Hermiston, Oregon, and it looks like today I am not the only one from Hermiston, Oregon. We got Louise from Union Gospel Mission. Uh, we are also accompanied by our Tri-County Burn Director, Tammy Wilkins. Thank you for coming. Uh, Lucy Meraz hosted, uh, I believe, the first BIPOC retreat at the Oregon Garden Center. Thank you so much. That was great. And yeah, so I'm Ricardo Garcia. Wait, a big shout out to all the presenters, too. Really nice. And I see you, Tony V. Thank you for having me at the Wonder Ball Room, September 1st. Thank you. I was really nervous, but yeah, thank you, brother. Love 4D. Um, so yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. You know, I um, came from a broken family. Dad was well off. Mom was poor. Uh, started working illegally, you know, to make ends meet at, a, at the age of 13, working in the fields. You know, if you've been in Hermiston, Oregon, you've been in that area, you know that is an agricultural area. I worked in onions, corn, potatoes, I drove trucks. Um, but yeah, ultimately, yeah, you know, I, I, I suffered at that time when I was working. I, you know, came across weed, started doing, started drinking. And, you know, ultimately when I got up to high school, I had an opiate addiction, broke my arms, uh, ended up getting injured. So that ultimately led to my opiate addiction. And, um, uh, by the age of 16, and I am youth, you know, when, you know, when fentanyl was going around, they didn't know what it was, you know. Um, I started doing fentanyl at the age of uh, 16, 17, so I was a junior in high school. Uh, it really affected me really bad. Uh, barely ended up graduating. Ended up graduating a year late. Um, so yeah, you know, my experience with fentanyl really plagued my life, you know, and I'm also ashamed of who I was. Uh, <laughs> I had a big pride, I had a big ego. I was really destroying the community. Uh, you know, being well known where I was from, uh, you know, um, just the person I was, and you know, I'm thankful I got into recovery. It really, ch it's changed my life. Um, it wasn't until I had lost my truck, insurance paid me out 17,000, like my parents say, I wiped my butt with that money, got another car, totaled that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, treatment didn't click. I didn't even know recovery was a thing. There's no, there's some resources out there now in Hermiston, but there wasn't really much when, you know, and I was, I was out and about, you know. All there was was uh, detox and you know, I didn't go to detox when I started my recovery journey, but detox just gets all the bad stuff out, so you're basically bleeding out. You know, you got to go to treatment. Uh, I went to a, a, a intensive outpatient 2.1 level of care, which was really great at VOA, LHBR, Latino home base recovery, and that really worked wonders for me. But going back to my addiction, I lost everything around the age of 21, and I did not want to be known as being homeless, especially in a small, conservative, a small, conservative, uh, pretty racist area, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, I did not want to be known, uh, you know, I did not want people talking about me, hey, have you heard of Rico? R little Rico's homeless, you know? That was not gonna happen, so I went to treatment and treatment at VOA really worked wonders for me. They taught me the tools and knowledge on how to have a sustainable, healthy recovery. And that has been working wonders for me. I did 
about a year of outpatient at Central City Concern, and that also really worked wonders for me. Um, the reason I'm at, I am at where I am at today is I want to help the community. I want to help people change their lives. I have hu huge aspiration and goals. I got my CRM last year, my PWS a couple months ago. This Saturday, I get my certified gambling recovery mentor. Um, I missed the cohort. I didn't see their email, but I'm um, in the works of getting my CADC1 next, at the start of next year in January. I'm going to work that out. I'm already signed up. And yeah, you know, part, part, part of being, you know, the youth, um, a success story and, and, and success I've seen in my recovery is getting people from my hometown to over here. And I am really thankful for Monoma County. They really saved my life. Um, you know, Measure 110 is working wonders. And it's, it's beautiful. Recovery is beautiful. The most important part about my recovery, I'm able to be a, a father for my two-month-old daughter who was born two months ago. <laughs> and you know what? It's, it's not easy. There are bad days. I think I think the time's up <laughs> for 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 this round <laughs> for we're, it's okay a for bit for more. for this part but you know um, you got to have a sense of belonging men and women and being part of a recovery community is really where it's at we need to make some noise and make keep making more awareness it's what's it's what saved my life you know especially um, since I got a brotherhood of like-minded people who also have the same aspiration and goals. It is possible and doable. ¿Cómo estamos de tiempo? Estamos bien. Um, yo sé que estar aquí um, es mucho porque es um, la parte donde queremos. The part that we want. See my Spanish, I'm sorry. The part where we want to be our very best, and then we saw, I say, oh, that's perfection. When you want to do your very best, <laughs> and then you ended up feel like, oh my goodness, I forgot to say this and this and this. So I'm glad we have a little bit more of time. So um, is somebody you want to add something else? Because we pretty much cover like a little bit of your journey, but also, um, how you get, so I don't know, Elvira, if you want to say, and Carmen, or how you get your certification, and one of the successes that, that give you when you wake up and say, yes, I'm so happy that I am certified recovery mentor. Um, to tell you the truth, <laughs> when Odelia mentioned to me uh, the peers work, work of being a peer, I didn't even know what. I said, I didn't know anything about that. I said, and I, I went to the dictionary and, and take a look of it, and uh, that's how I comprehend that, that um, work. You know, I never heard of it. I mean, even though I was involved in helping other people, you know, freely and uh, with no, no pain. That's how you work in AA, right? You gotta give back what you, uh, what they gave it to you and, and pass the message and pass the message. You, you hear those all the time in, in AA, you know? But um, I said, maybe I should give it a try, you know? And, um, and, then, and then she said, as a matter of fact, there's a position there. <laughs> For peer work, uh, what what do you mean? I I never done any anything like that. No, no, you already done it for free, you know, <laughs> in your journey. So I gave him a try. I came and and I'm really grateful to MHAA. Oh no, they accepted me, be, you know, without without any certification, you know, and that's a bless. I mean, it's really a bless. And then uh, I think a week or two weeks later, the I took the classes there, and and I got my certification. So, the the a little bit barrier for me was how I'm gonna do 
because I'm still in my business, you know, as, as a small business owner, um, of course, you got to do everything, right? You go bid a job, you know, give the numbers, talk to the customers, do the job most of the time, you know. How am I going to do this? How the hell am I going to do this? But um, with the help of my, um, I would say my higher powers, uh, I'm doing it. And I got this certification. I learned a lot through that. And more so with the practice that I'm doing it over there on the street with the people, um, Mayan community coming from uh, Guatemala, some of them, they speak uh, early Spanish, uh, they speak uh, Mayan, and, and, and my background as an uh, Indian too, you know, it helps, it helps in uh, helping those people uh, to walk through recovery, you know, and helping them connect to the resources um, that there is available in Oregon, which is a lot now. I would say uh, it's a lot through uh, Measure 110. So that's one of the rewarding part of this job, you know, helping people seeing their work. Of course, not everybody made it, you know, people relapse and then that's part of the recovery process too, but a lot of them is, is doing good they getting the, the resources they, they need, uh, talking about ba bus passes, um, um, you know, uh, food car, uh, taking them to food uh, sources and stuff like that. It's really rewarding for me and I'm I, I really grateful that I got this opportunity to work um, with the people through uh, my agency. Thank you. I think we got, thank you. Eddie. Okay, we got like a couple minutes left. But, um, one minute. <laughs> one minute. So one of the things that, you know, that I was afraid to be a mentor, honestly. I got my certification a few years ago, and I was like, no, I got hired one time, and I was this close, you know, to start working. I accept the job offer, and three days before I called, I said, no, I can't for a reason, you know. But I was afraid. Now I have a passion to help, my, especially my community, because my community needs that help. We are blessed now that we got coverage, Oregon Health Plan for everyone. But before July, yes, applause for that, a bit. Before that, we were limited, the Latino community, because people undocumented, they couldn't get into detox, only Hooper. We couldn't get any health services, only for emergency, no dental coverage. So now we can take our peers and get the full benefits. Now, and I hope that these doors keep open more and more wider and wider and wider so our community don't suffer and don't have limitations. And we are here to advocate for that. Like the rest of some of the people here, advocate, write to the legisl legisl legislators. <laughs> My Spanglish, but you understood. Uh, and we have to do that, advocate, speak up, let's hear our voices. Because if we don't speak, nobody's gonna hear. And especially, and we are, we are here, the voices of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Odelia, and Elvio, Carmen, Elizabeth, Ricardo. So we're opening up for a couple of minutes of questions, if there are any questions. No question, one question, okay. Thank you. Um, I guess my question is more for um, Ricardo and it's kind of more of a comment. So I'm from Pendleton, Oregon, and which is also on the east side. And listening to everybody today, we're talking about um, you know, the resources that are available and a lot of that is here on the west side of the state. and. Uh, we just, we don't have that on the east side, so it's really amazing to see what is available here and what could hopefully be shared with our friends on the east side, um, just because we are so rural and we are so like out there and we are so limited in what we can provide, especially to our youth. 
So um, I just I also want to know yeah. like what organization you worked for because we should Yeah, I work for the Mental Health Addiction Association of Oregon and I'm the Latinx Burn Program Navigator Coordinator for our Latin Latinx team. And yeah, you know, that's 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 my story, you know. There was really nothing out there, so um, I had to leave Hermiston. I had to come out here where there is more resources. But even then when you think about it, I think they are failing our Latinos. There's, there's, there's probably two, you know, anybody could correct me, or correct me if I'm wrong. You know, this is my opinion. This is from what I know with resources and, and programs. We have Volunteers of America, Latino Home Based Recovery, which is a 2.1 level of care, culturally specific service. And then we have Best Care Latinos in Madras, I believe 3.1 level of care and up. Uh, in, they do all sorts of stuff, but where are the other programs, you know? I, 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 I see the referrals that come in where I work, and I, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people that work in the community, and sometimes there just isn't places, you know, there isn't a way to help because, you know, not everyone can be served, and it's, it's, it is really sad, and we're the most diverse community. You know, we, we're, we're white, black, brown, everything, native, and we're pretty underrepresented. That's, that's just how I feel, but answering your question, I do the best to get information out there in the East. Um, there, are some, there are some people who work in the field there that were over here and now they're over there, but I do the best spreading the word about recovery and how people can truly heal and hope is real. Um, on my Facebook, my social media, when I go out there, um, I got six brothers, four sisters, so all different age, age groups, you know, running down. I talk to families. Um, I talk to the church. Uh, I, I've, I've raised as much as awareness I can in um, that area. Boardman, Irrigan, Hermiston, and, you know, I'm youth. I just turned 24 this year, and I got clean in, two, in 2020. I was 21. And... You know, this is a great way to kick off Recovery Month. And yeah, hope is real, recovery is real, and we're here. Thank you, Ricardo. I, I want to give them a great thank you again and round of applause.